What was that noise? Hello everyone, and welcome to the dojo. I have a game here for you that is Richter Jungle. Now, many people like to refer to this as Mage Richter. I don't like that description of it. You'll notice that we start off with the Mage Crest that is most commonly used in the mid lane. And Richter's pretty tanky inherently especially in the early game where everyone doesn't have items he's one of the, he's probably the tankiest character so you get a little bit of leeway there when you're doing something like this now this build it's a work in progress i'm not quite sure how i should build it but we're in the experimentation phase here of the build, and the crest evolution that we're going to opt for here is the Time Flux Band. And just for reference, the, for those of you who are not sure what which one that is, it's the one where when you activate it, it, it saves the spot where you activate it, and then after about three seconds it brings you back to that marked spot with all of the your cooldowns refreshed except for your ultimate so this leads to some very interesting situations because you essentially have two hooks to throw you also have two of the whip slaps which is your q and of course your e which is the aoe damage uh, ability. Now everybody builds their Richter differently. But just to comment on to start comment, commenting on the game, I wanted to gank solo lane and help them out. Unfortunately, when he went to contest green buff, the enemy jungler was already there, which I did not know. And here we just stop his back to be annoying. We don't want to overextend cuz we lose that fight. But, you, you, you know, it's just, you, you should never allow your opponent a free back ever. It, 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 you gotta slow them down every which way you can. Even if that just means interrupting their back. If it takes them 15 se seconds longer to get back to base, to buy, and to go into lane, you, you know, it's so much better for you and your team. Now... The way to play this, there's a few ways you play it. I, I, I haven't experimented as much as I would have liked. I prioritize his E, which is his AoE damage over time ability, because it, it, it I think it does the most damage. Uh, and it's also an AoE, so when you're clearing jungle, it applies to all the minions as you see here. And one of the weaknesses of going this build is your abysmal jungle clear, especially early on. It's horrendous. And some people prefer to go the hooks, because when you level into the hooks, not only it, do you reduce the cooldown significantly, you also increase the damage significantly. It, 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 it is... If you think of him as a mage, which again, I don't like to do exactly, but it is his nuke. And if you, I guess if you're ganking early, you might want to prioritize that. But for, again, for me personally, I kind of like to dedicate the early game to just trying to clear the jungle as much as possible. Now, this, this is a particularly strange situation, because I'm level 5, and I saw the dual lane was 4, which was kind of odd. Um, normally, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not that far, but I, I also noticed that I have a higher level than the enemy jungler. And at that point, I'm, I'm kind of perplexed as to why that is. Uh, the mid laner rotated, so I'm trying to shove the lane here, because number 1... It's more gold and XP for us. 
I mean, for me, rather. And as a jungler, this is, like, amazing, amazing farm. And we also shove our wave under their tower, so their enemy mid laner is losing out on farm, too. So we we recognize that opportunity, and we capitalize it on 100%. And right now, I'm firing on all cylinders, trying to farm and, and get gold, because the, the sooner I get to level 6, the sooner I can gank with my ult, and that makes me way more dangerous. Way, 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 way more dangerous. So all in all, we're level 6, and, we're, and what do we do? We're ganking immediately. Right the boom, as soon as we get it, we're going. Because it, we want to have that on cooldown as often as possible. And so, the steal, it was, it might, like, yeah, we missed the hook. And although that gank was unsuccessful, it depends on how you look at it. Because it, uh, we did gain a huge advantage from it, if you think about it. All I did was basically walk in lane and he burned his blink. So, all in all, I think that's a success. Because now, uh... For the next five minutes, we should revisit his lane to punish him for for not having a blink. Because we we will also have our blink. Uh, so, however, still you can see the jungle clear is bad, and our sustain is even worse. So, you have to try to be as efficient as possible with clearing jungle camps. You have to be kiting jungle camps to save every bit of HP if you want to be ganking. We're going to back now, and we are... Our first item is going to be Oathkeeper. And we opt to go for Oathkeeper as our uh, opening item of choice. And the reason being is this. Be uh, Blossom Plate is really awesome, especially for clearing jungle too. But it, it, it just... Uh, offers a kind of different play style where you kind of sacrifice uh, durability in, for uh, just overall damage output. And so because we're going this more aggressive magic damage oriented Richter, we, we really want to just try to get a good amount of magic damage at least for the first item. Because you know think about it this way if you have the blossom plate and you hook somebody like a lot of you're gonna be doing a, a lot of damage with the blossom plate but that's pretty much it okay so we opt to go our, for our blink here I, I see the sparrow and maybe it wasn't necessary but I just didn't want to give him an opportunity to blink and then we tried to help out our team here and we're in a good spot, you know. Again, early game, not many items are on the on the board, so we're we we're, we're tanky. We endure quite a bit, even though I kind of miss my um, skill shot there, unfortunately, because we would have killed the rampage and probably the, uh, oh, the Richter died. We would have gotten the rampage there, but that's okay because we burned blinks from that. Even though I also burned mine, but it's okay. And I'm 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 trying to see here if the Richter lazy backs. I see the sparrow there, and oh yeah. Just a, a nice, juicy, max range hook on a lazy backer. You'll love to see it. You, it and let me tell you, if you get those in-game, oh man, it feels good. <laughs> it feels really, really good. Yeah, I, I give a little chef's kiss there because it's, you know, you, you, you gotta enjoy the simple, the simple things in, in Predecessor. <laughs> um... And again, we're, we're low, but we're back to farming. The blue buff, you can see we're low on mana, and this would be amazing for us. Um, and we can actually, at this point, finish our Oath Keeper. And then... Well, I'm not I'm not backing yet. I'll explain the build, uh, 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 my next steps in terms of item itemization uh, when, when, when we back. So I dropped the ward there just to... Um, you know, uh, make sure we have eyes on, on Fangtooth. Here, I am dropping another ward. I think that, that, that I did that. But I'm really low. I really don't want to take this fight. I'm just posturing and trying to kind of intimidate them and, and hoping they don't collapse on me, basically. <laughs> so this is kind of like, a, like puff your chest out and hope that the other guy blinks type of thing. Because if it, they, like I was low enough to where if they just turned on me, I'd get eaten up. And now it's it's a full-on team fight, so it's like 
we uh, the team's got to engage. I have my ult, and we have a nice little team fight there. I kind of mess up. Uh, I should have hooked the other character, but again, all in all, good exchange for our team. I'm surveying the, the field and, and see if there's anything I can do. And I here I catch a, a a lone sparrow taking the short way, and you already know that's like. <laughs> Uh, she took a big risk there for no for a very short profit she should have just taken the long way and the, and she paid for it there and again we're still fighting still fighting so you can't leave your team to dry we, we catch the the Richter and you know you're we're still squish like somewhat squishy and and the, the steel punished us there but I think overall the exchanges were in our favor. We finish our Oath Keeper, and now this is the point in the game where I'm thinking, what 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 do I build here? What do I? What's the next item? I, I considered I wanted a defensive option. I'm checking which heroes are doing really well, and I think it was the Steel who was three and zero, uh, and yeah, and that's a lot of magic damage. So here I opt to go for uh, Leviathan. You know, it has, if I'm not mistaken, it has uh, tenacity, which is great, especially against the team that we're up against. If you if you see um, Rampage's Rock, all of Steel's stuff, Richter's stuff, Gadget's Root, all tenacity is going to really, really pay off there. And the other reason why I like it is because... I, I believe the damage reduction will be triggered very often. I, that's at, that, at least at the time. That's what I suspected. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to really apply the 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 blight or the trauma. What, what you know the the healing reduction that efficiently, but that's okay. I'm not even too worried about that. But I I just got it because it was a great magic damage option which is going to help me against Rampage's Rock. If I'm not mistaken, it's magic. I could be wrong about that, though. Uh, all of Steel, all of Gadget, and all of Richter. So three out of the five characters I'm getting an amazing defensive item for. And here we, we, we find Gadget, and now that our Oath Keeper is online, yeah, we do damage. And especially since we've been farming well early game, yeah, that is going to be just a, an easy uh rotate like we just use all our abilities and that's it we can delete squishies like that carries included supports too depending on the support not so much a richter you know but and here we pop our time warp and it, it works out pretty well like we basically completely negate richter in him contributing to the fight we hurt him enough that he has to go back and that opens us up for taking Fangtooth the rampage is there he's looking to uh, steal it from us and I'm really low and this is very dangerous and this is where the lack of sustain really um, hurts. Gadget drops a nice ult, I, but she leaves me just enough space to not take damage in the back of the fang pit. And I blink and use my E to speed on out of there with my life, luckily. We were very close on the Razor's Edge, and even now, fighting these minions, we're super low, but that those, those low health bars, you gotta push it to the limit. You, you always, always, always have to. You know, some, there, if you're up against a Kalari or a Murdoch, you, you know, you can't, maybe you shouldn't, because especially, like, better teams will have wards in your jungle, and then that's a free kill, basically. And, and especially with a, a good Kalari, she'll see that you have low HP and she's gonna come hunting for you because she's very quick, 
she maneuvers through the map and traverses the map speedily and I wanted to take the blue buff right after then but I but I backed simply because it, it I I really don't think I had the HP there to actually kill it it probably would have killed me before I would be able to but we we get our Leviathan early and now we we, we are durable and we do damage and here I try to hook the um the sparrow but unfortunately I I activated my time warp a little bit too early like one second too early because so the, the this interaction is really really amazing if you activate your time flux band and you hook and if it teleports you back in the middle of your hook animation here hold on one second we, we just scared the gadget there it's more of just to keep him on his toes and not let him feel comfortable but if you catch an opponent in during the hook and you 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 time warp back to the spot, it's gonna pull the opponent all the way back to the spot. So that when oh hold on we're gonna we're just gonna gank here. And then this is awkward here. A <laughs> sparrow, lazy backing. Oh, so <laughs> all in all, is a, a, a successful gank. And we, again, we're tank. We have Leviathan, and I and I goofily run back into the tower because I thought we had a, a wave, and now I'm in, I'm up, uh, Poop Creek without a without a paddle, and this rampage wants to sink my boat. So he he sees the Drongo, and I see that he uses his leap, and he just gave me enough time to run away. And like I, that, that kill is so funny because it's just like I got hand delivered a kill. And what, just so you know, when I was running away from that rampage, I broke. I, I I tried very carefully to break the line of sight so it'd be impossible for him to hit me with the rock. So you got to take that into consideration. And one thing to note, guys, if you ever if you're crazy enough to try this build, you see Oathkeeper. Watch, watch when I'm clearing the jungle. Watch how I manage the Oak Keeper cooldown. You ha you you have to do this if you're going o o Oath Keeper. Did I say Oath Keeper? Oath Oath Keeper. You you, you see how I, I I'm not wasting the my abilities and I'm procking Oath Keeper with every ability cast. You if you want to because we you, you have to keep in mind our jungle clear sucks. It is bad. So you have to try to be as efficient as possible in every way and that's that that that's our biggest source of damage in, in initially in the early game so you have to maximize that in ideally against uh enemy players you want to do the same thing but you, you know sometimes you it's not worth it you have to judge the situation when it comes to fighting enemy players because sometimes you want to maximize damage but sometimes you want to maximize your ability rotations so maybe you could get another round of abilities in a fight because you know you do have to wait that like one and a half seconds in between abilities and that can mean the difference between a victory and a loss so here are solo laners out of lane and we catch this big juicy wave um because it, it was just going to go under tower and and it we we are in, in terms of farming don't let this this game let you think that this is how it's going to be i had an incredible start in terms of farming the jungle and also getting some free waves in mid lane and there too which is not something guaranteed so uh keep that in mind keep that in mind i i i, I like to be a macro oriented player too and push every advantage in that regard and that's why i'm, I'm sometimes I, I focus a little too much on that but here we have a big team fight breakout and their two tanks are are here their gadget drops a great ult and the steel who initiated i i wasn't gonna let him get out of there and i should be more in the front lines now and i, I actually get body blocked here by drongo <laughs> this stunned drongo that's how big of a body Richter is. But uh, our team, all in all, 
you know, we took their in initiations, we get, we killed off the duo, and, and now we are taking Fangtooth again. And I burned my smite right at the beginning because we we only it was only me and the crunch, and I figured that it would be off cooldown by the time Fangtooth is low enough to 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 actually smite again. And and so you saw we were actually like a fraction of a second late there with the smite. It got all the way down to like 774, which if there was an enemy jungler there, he had an opportunity to steal that, which is bad. But I, w I also wasn't expecting the extra help to come in and help us clear that. I, I thought it was only gonna be the crunch and I. But all in all, we're in the driver's seat here. Uh, now normally, especially against a Rampage, Rampage is probably the best jungler in the game. This is not gonna, this is not like a, a a scenario that is going to be very common because Rampage has great jungle clear, great sustain. He should he should be just eating up jungle minions and somehow we we've outfarmed him. So not not a particularly good jungle game for our Rampage opponent. Uh, yeah, and, and guys, I just like to be honest with you in in the depictions of the games because I don't want I don't want to like make it seem like hey the, you play this build and this is gonna it's gonna go this way no no no, no. predecessor's not that kind of game um like and, and this steal he's doing really well look at look what happens when we go up against a player that's doing really really well right we blow all our cooldowns and we actually dodge his stun with the with the time flux band and then he hits us with that his his shield is about to be up so that we 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 either blink or or we're about to probably get another shield s smack in the face in a, a second there and yeah i i at that point in, in in the game i thought to myself sheesh that guy is tank i basically got two rounds of abilities on him and and only did like 50 percent of his life maybe less and we could back but you know again Time is money. If we're backing, we're not. We 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 didn't we didn't get this camp, and it was just that that camp is a, is a lot of juicy money. So now we back, and we're watching for any kind of if anybody rolls up on us there. Uh, and now we have World Breaker. So now World Breaker is a nice item because we do have a defensive item in Leviathan, magic armor, and the the overall damage mitigation, which which also applies to physical. So it's pretty sweet. Uh, and, and yeah, for those of you who may not know, Leviathan's damage mitigation, according to the tooltip, also applies to physical. So you, you get a nice little, uh, a nice little buffer against physical damage as well. And World Breaker, it, you know, I, you have ten, we have I, I, tenacity, you have health, your health deals magical damage, and you have magical power. So it's like. A beautiful item for Richter, who has a, a a very large health pool. I think he might have the largest health pool of the entire cast. So we catch the Rampage, who is super fragile, because I think he built physical armor, and since we're pure magical, it's, it, it works out well for us. We 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 barely hit him, and he 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 took a lot of damage. And then, yeah, everybody's just like I don't I don't know why they were so comfortable walking in front of me. It must have been because of my some of my missed hooks earlier on. But this fight it was super awkward. I get stuck in the wall, and then I have to use my E to speed up before the time flux spin uh, <laughs> uh, dissipates. And that was really unfortunate because I it, I, I could have probably done much better there had I not got caught on the wall. And now they're turning on me, and this is fine because I'm really tanky, and it's not a problem. And unfortunately, there the I let the sparrow get away. I should have just ulted. But at the very least, again, just just for showing up, we burn a blink. I mean that that's that's respect. And if you're if you achieve that in a game, you it's a huge asset to your team. And this, and here we see, unfortunately for the sparrow, she was way overextended. She basically, like that blink right there, it, it makes it, it saved her, and now that blink just became another waste because she just ended up overextending again. And 
I'm going now to clear any wards for the next Fang Tooth. And this is important. You have to kind of get in the rhythm of before the Fang Tooth shows up, you have to clear out wards for your team. And you have to do it before. You can't be doing it when Fang Tooth is up because that's a, that's too late already. You wanna you wanna do it before it spawns so your team can just go in there with confidence and then just try to take it down. And here, the t their enemy team is engaging, and it was a clear call to just disengage Fang Tooth. If I stay there, since again. You, we have to recognize the situation, right? I'm not tanky Richter. Oh. Here, here, the time flux span, it, it teleports us out of the gadget dome. And it's like, we, we basically get two free rotations on the carry. Beautiful. That was, that, it was a great exchange there. And here we're trying to finish off the support. Where, since he's a support and we're a jungler, we eat him up easily, effortlessly. And he just zooms on out of here. That He uses his like Leaf Song bracelet or whatever it is, and that boy is gone. He just... Pew! Was, <laughs> he said, see you later. <laughs> he wasn't trying to find out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, with, 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 with Fang Tooth to wrap up... As a jungler, you, you you have to have the sentries to clear the wards before your t before Fang Tooth is up, because having vision there and and it's a there's a world of difference between that and not having vision there. If you don't have the vision there, your team is timid, scared, uncertain, as they rightfully should be. They should be cautious, and you you help to bring that confidence when you clear the wards. It's imperative. It's your responsibility. If you're a jungler and you're not doing that, please start doing it. You're gonna have teams that that recognize it and capitalize on it spectacularly, and also you're gonna have teams that just don't do anything. With it. That's just the nature of you know playing uh, a, a casual game. So regardless, you should always be practicing it. Don't neglect that. And now we have a very nice amount of gold. We'll, we'll be picking up uh, some items here soon because gold in the bank is all good and fun, but not if you don't spend it. It's meaningless if you don't spend it. So our next item here is Flux Matrix because it gives, although I'm not, a, I, I didn't want extra magical armor. I really didn't want to. Uh, another item that that I realized after the game I could have went was uh, Dynamo because Dynamo is a really awesome item for Richter because I'm pretty sure if you do your ult and you catch three people Dynamo applies that bonus damage to the three people and also it also applies to the hook because the hook registers as a stun so Dynamo was would probably be a much better choice here but Flux Matrix, it, it, it's not bad because you, like, you do more magic damage, right? That's one of the things where, because, hold on, here I, I try to catch the Sparrow and unfortunately Richter, not Richter, Rampage body blocks me. And then I, I'm like, okay, they found me out. But then I see like, wait, they're still pushing up here. Why are they doing that? That's silly. Did they not just see what just happened? So I had to remind them. <laughs> and then the, the steel blinking and then... Unfortunately, that's all she wrote for uh, Sparrow. And we're chasing down this rampage. He pops his Saffir Mantle. And somehow my AoE kills the orange buff. I don't know why he stopped for orange buff. That's not like the time. <laughs> that's not the time to stop for orange buff. <laughs> you're, you're, you're on the verge of death being chased down by the enemy team. I understand, like, the river buffs are very good rewards, but that was not the right call. <laughs> um, but back to the itemization, we pick Flux Matrix, yeah, because number one, it, it increases our magic damage, which that's all all of our damage, basically. Our, our auto attacks hit, like, um, 
like marshmallows. When now at this point in the game, when we're slapping people, it's like we're we're throwing marshmallows at them. All the bulk of our damage is really our hook. That's right now where the damage is done. But Flux Matrix helps us increase our Q and E damage. And so here, my team wants to kind of take Orb Prime. And uh, again, I'm just doing a pass, trying to clear the wards, trying to see if the steel was in lane, and he's not. And so, yeah, Flux Matrix, it's a great item for Richter. Bonus damage. It also reduces enemies' tenacity. And the, the tena enemy's tenacity can uh, reach a negative value. So what, what that means is, say you have a stun for two seconds and then you have Flux Matrix. If they're under the effects of the Flux Matrix when that stun hits, it's more than two seconds. And that applies to your team. So in our team, we have Decker, we have Crunch, so it's it's phenomenal it's, it's absolutely phenomenal and i just whiff all my abilities there because i honestly didn't expect the steel to just like go all the way over there you know but i mean he was he was very very brave so i i love flux matrix i i might have probably like i it, it probably nah i don't think I, I liked in, in this case I, I the, the defensive item I think it was Leviathan worked out very well. Um, I guess Flux Matrix could be a p potential. I actually don't I, I can't recall if it if it uh, gives any defenses, but I, I know I know Dynamo does. But here I'm I'm looking to go in on the Sparrow because I could just do one rotation and and then she's going to be done. But she very, very smartly is wary of my plan, and at this point we just we have we, we have such a huge advantage: three fangs to none, four prime. One one inhib goes down. I should have peeled for the drongo there. That was a big mistake by me. I I should have been there to help him because. If I help him, the Rampage just dies and, and the Drongo lives, so... I, I realized that immediately after, but uh, I, I made the mistake and, and, and at that point it was too late. And now... They're they're just on the back foot and... They have a... They're, they're, they need to pull off basically a miracle at this point just because we're so far ahead. We, 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 we have all our tier 2s and... Uh, yeah, so we're just trying to end it because I, 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 I personally hate prolonging games. I try to get the sparrow there, and as you see, look, all all the the sparrow ult. Oh, yeah, the sparrow. I, I like the sparrow's confidence there. I mean, maybe, maybe it's not confidence, maybe it's just madness because it, it was like a guaranteed death, but yeah. Oh, I missed the point blank. But. But yeah, I, I like it. Fight like Sparrow decided to to die on her own two feet rather than her knees. So really awesome. And yeah, that's gonna be game. And there, this is their last hoorah. I see the Richter pull, and I and I I want to pull him off of the Gideon because. One one thing to note is if you have if you're a Richter with another Richter in the game, it, he if he throws his hook, the Richter who throws the hook first is at a disadvantage because you're stunned yourself during the hook animation. So if if you are playing against a Richter, n n make note of that. If he throws a hook and it doesn't land, hook him. And. That's going to be game. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this game. Plenty more content on the way. If you like Predecessor, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll be releasing many more games and, and many more item spotlights and whatnot. Thanks for watching, and as always, fight on, friends.